Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie a great attractor pattern, a later skater. So I like to tie them in larger sizes for attractors. They work well as a beetle or a hopper, and in smaller sizes they work really, really well as a caddis pattern. So I'm also going to tie it on a little bit different of a hook, which is going to be a small octopus hook with an upturned eye that just allows it to skate better. So for a hook here, I have an up eye circle hook uh, or an intruder hook, and I like to tie it on this hook. I haven't seen too many other people tie them on this style hook. Normally I see them tie them on a curve shank, like a long curve shank hook like you would see a stimulator tied on. But after tying it on this style hook, I find that it skates better. I think it floats better and I get better hookups. So I'm just creating an underbody here and it's just going to go all the way almost a little bit down the bend and then all the way up the shank. And I just have flashaboo. Um, I'm not being too neat with how I wrap it. It doesn't really matter because it's just going to add a little bit of flash and nothing else. I like to do it in pearl, but you can do it in any color that will match the foam that you're using. So I'm going to create a little bit of a base and where I'm going to tie my foam down is right at this hook point here. So I'm going to grab a tiny bit of zappa gap here and just hit the shank where the foam is going to come down or tie down onto so it won't rotate on me. So I've just taken this foam and cut it to the width of the hook gap, rounded off the back the best I can. It doesn't really matter. So I'm tying it in right just a teeny teeny bit behind the hook bend. Again, you can you can change that up a little bit. It's not massively imperative that you get the length exactly the same. So just tie this down and you wanna so we're gonna tie over this here. So you wanna create the thread base and make sure that the foam is fully seated down. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit of this extra off and I'll trim it to length at the end. So the first thing I'm going to tie in is going to be the wing. And for the wing, I just have some deer body hair. And this isn't a natural. I'm going to cut more than I need and then pull out some of the shorter fibers and broken ones later. So it's about, I took about a pencil's diameter, comb out the under fur, and then put it in a hair stacker. And just stack the tips even. All right, so I'm going to measure my wing so that it extends just slightly past the body. And I like to cut this out now so I don't have a bunch of stuff flared all over the place. Clean those up. <laughs> start tying it in right behind the head and then work your way back. And start here with a lot of tension to really cinch it down and then ease off tension as you move back to control the flare. Cover everything up. So I like it to be nice and wide and flared uh, just for an attractor. It's a way it gives a good footprint when they look up and it fishes well that way for me. So next I'm going to tie in a hot spot wing, or just an indicator. And I just have some pink poly here. I'm just going to grab a hank of it, double it over my thread, and then tie it down into place. I don't want it to be too wide. I want to be able to see it, but I don't want the fish to see it. So cut it just even with the tips of the deer hair. So next I'm going to tie in my rubber legs. I vary the color of the legs depending, and I find it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to tie it in on my side of the hook. And then work it forwards. And pull it down and adjust it if I need to. And then fold it over the other side. 
tie it down, then work it back. Um, just going to check and adjust if I need to, which I don't. Let's just sink. Make sure that's down there pretty well, or tied down pretty well. Next, I'm going to do my hackle. So I'm just going to grab some hackle, and I have some bar ginger here, which is a cool color. Two hackle feathers and clean them up, pull back the barbs from where uh, they start to kind of get even. You'll see, you see they become even right here. And then on one side, I'm gonna strip a little bit off and that'll just help it wrap the way I want it to. Let's just tie those down. And this is kind of a messy fly, especially when I'm tying. Um, it doesn't look that neat. It's not a classic dry fly. But you hide everything. And at the end, it just comes out big and bushy and great. <laughs> All right. So let me wrap those forwards. And the reason I grabbed two here is just so it's a nice full hackle. And you'll see it's a it's a big wide body too from tying the foam in. So just make sure you get good coverage. Let's pull those up. Walk your thread through so you don't trap anything or too much. Trim those off. Cut my legs. I'm gonna whip finish right here and then put a drop of super glue. Just make sure when you whip finish, you don't trap either the legs or the hackle down or too much of the hackle. Cut the thread, add a drop of super glue right behind the foam here on my thread wraps. And then trim the legs to length. Let's just pull them all down at once. Cut them. Right, and then trim the head. This head actually is pretty good as far as length, but just a little bit less. And you can round this. It seems to cast better, but it doesn't skate as well. So I like to keep it square. All right, and that's the later skater, a great attractor pattern. Uh, great caddis tied in a smaller size. Um, I fish them down to probably a size 16, and they work really well for me on high mountain streams for wild brook trout. Thanks for watching, guys, and you can find all the materials right at tridentflyfishing.com.